Next, I want to look at an example of a market in which the buyer has more information than the seller, leading to, again, an overallocation of resources towards the good. So we'll be looking at a resource market here. Specifically, we'll be looking at the market for workers in a factory where harmful substances are used. So the scenario here is actually based on a historic situation in which many factory workers in rich industrialized countries were exposed to toxic chemicals such as asbestos. Asbestos is a chemical that is used in factory production that has a high likelihood of causing cancer among those who inhale it later in life. Now many times workers in these factories had no idea that they were being exposed daily to toxic chemicals that could cause cancer later in life because employers kept this information from prospective employees. Because of the lack of full information about the employment condition, workers believe working in the factory is safer than it actually is. Therefore, the supply of willing workers is higher than it would be with symmetric information. If workers had all the information about how dangerous the working conditions were, there would be a smaller supply of willing workers. So since more workers are willing to work in these factories, the wage rate the factory owners have to pay is lower and the quantity of workers employed in these factories is higher than the socially optimal quantity. Now we can do a graphical analysis of a resource market diagram in which workers do not know all the information about the conditions under which they'll be employed. In our graph down here we'll be looking at the market for labor in asbestos factories or any factories that use asbestos in their production and therefore expose workers to cancer causing substances. Now the price of labor is the wage rate. So instead of putting a price on a vertical axis, we'll be putting the wage rate. Down here we're going to put the quantity of labor and we're going to put the demand for labor, which represents the marginal private benefit of employing workers by the factory owner, we'll call this demand, and we're going to put the supply of labor, assuming that workers have no idea that they're going to be exposed to toxic chemicals. So this is the supply of labor, we'll call this S1, which equals the marginal private cost to the firm of employing workers. And this is with asymmetric information. Let's compare this to the supply of workers that would have been willing to work in these factories if there had been more symmetric information, more perfect information about the true harmful nature of the employment. If workers had been more aware of the toxic chemicals that they would be exposed to, there would be a smaller supply of willing workers to work in these factories. I'll call this S2, which represents the marginal social cost of employing workers. And this is with information symmetry. So the supply of willing workers would have been much lower had workers known about the toxic chemicals they would be exposed to. How does this impact the quantity of employment in these factories? Well, since firms always make hiring decisions and output decisions based on their private costs and their private benefits, we, we would see that the equilibrium quantity under asymmetric information, I'll call this Q1, is greater than how many workers would have been employed if the workers had known all the facts about employment in these factories. So we have Q2 here. Additionally, we can look at the wage rate. The factory owner has to pay workers a much lower wage because the workers are not aware of how harmful the conditions are. So the equilibrium wage rate, I'll call this WRE, wage rate equilibrium, is much lower than the socially optimal wage rate. So Q2 down here, I guess I could call that, I can call Q2, the socially optimal quantity, is less than the equilibrium quantity of employment in this labor market. So we can say there are too many workers employed in these toxic environments. We can show the welfare loss resulting from this by going up to the marginal social cost curve from our quantity of Q1. So if I go up here, I can see that the marginal social cost of employing this many workers, this is our MSC, our marginal social cost, is much higher than the marginal social benefit again arising from the asymmetric information that is experienced when the factory owners do not share all the information about the harmful work environment with their workers. So we have a welfare loss in this market equal to this blue triangle. If workers had had more perfect information 
about the harmful working conditions in which they'd be employed. The supply of willing and able workers would have been much lower. Factory owners would have had to pay higher wage rates. Less workers would be employed in this industry, and the cost of producing these goods that use asbestos in their production would have been much higher. So the existence of asymmetric information in this labor market can be correlated with the existence of negative externalities in the production of this good. If instead of looking at the market for workers here, we had looked at the market for this good, you could say that the firm is externalizing its costs of production on its own workers by exposing them to toxic chemicals. So we have a welfare loss in the labor market just like we would in the market for the final product itself. There's a loss of total welfare arising from the imperfect information that the employers are not sharing with their employees. So looking at both our graphs here, we can see that in both cases, the cost to society, the marginal social cost, is greater than the marginal social benefit when asymmetric information exists. Whenever marginal social cost is greater than marginal social benefit, we have to say the resources are over allocated towards the production of that good. In the case of Volkswagen diesels, too many cars were produced and bought by consumers because consumers did not know the true environmental impact of those cars. In the case of workers in a factory that exposes workers to asbestos, more workers are employed at a lower wage rate than would be employed if workers had had perfect information about the true harmful effects to their health of being employed in these factories. So how does this relate to market failure? Going back to our definition of market failure, we can see once again that a market failure exists whenever the provision of a good by the free market takes place at a level that is greater than or less than the socially optimal level. Whenever sellers withhold information about the true nature of the product that they're selling, it's likely that consumers will demand a higher level of that product than they would if they knew the true nature of the product. Also, in the case of employment, if employers hide the true nature of employment at their firm from their employees, especially in the case of harmful chemicals or other adverse working conditions, the willing supply of workers will be much higher and the wages the firm will have to pay will be much lower. Hence, in the case of asymmetric information, an inefficient allocation of resources is likely to occur by the free market. Mm -hmm.